right. Well, first, <laughs> congratulations on finally getting to a network that's going to give you a third season. I know. I I'm so excited to hear that. It's it was it was a surprise to me as well. I mean, I I knew that we there were other buyers that were interested, but whenever you're in that situation, you don't know if they're going to pick up the show and then slash the budget, and then you can't produce it well. And then for me, then there's no point if you can't do it well. I don't want to do anything that I can't. Do. And you have a pretty loyal fan base, but are you surprised at all by the intensity of the fan base for this show? Well, you know, what was surprising is, is the demographic of the fan base be you know, last year when we did the panel, it was primarily young women, like 12 to 25, that were supportive of the show, and I love that because a I, I I I love that audience and I think that anybody who is embracing the horror genre in an unexpected way should be celebrated uh, because it's an underrated genre and it doesn't get enough love or respect and so to see uh, these young smart literary women responding to the show so enthusiastically I, it just it gave me hope for the future. <laughs> Your show is obviously a horror show, but it's also kind of a show for foodies in a way. Uh-huh. <laughs> and I'm curious how you got Jose Andres involved. Well, I, the, that because was, when I saw that in the credits, I was like, oh, well, of course, <laughs> that makes perfect sense. I've been a fan of his since in Spain. I've been watching that, and of course, the adult disappearance is on Top Chef. So the moment they called me and said they, they're going to hire you to do Hannibal. The first call I made to my agent was, how do I get in contact with Jose Andres because I want him to be the culinary consultant because we needed a culinary consultant on the show who had a much more sophisticated expertise than I did. And they said, well, we actually represent him and he just got the James Beard Award and he's having a thing on Tuesday, you should come and ask him. And so I went to this this uh, mixer to celebrate his award, and they introduced me. They said Brian's working on the Hannibal series. He's like, I want to be your. I couldn't even get the words out before he was volunteering to be the culinary consultant. And then we proceeded to have this 45 minute conversation of all the strange ways that you could prepare a human being to eat. And he was so enthusiastic and passionate. And I, I wish I could show you some of the videos of him, like that he would send me visiting like, meat markets. <laughs> and so he was the right man for the job. That's awesome. Yeah. Jumping off that, and not to get too ahead of ourselves, but what will you do when Hannibal's no longer able to have access to a kitchen? Well, we have the Mind Palace, and uh, you know, the there is. Um, you know, we talked a lot about like once he is incarcerated, how do we keep the aesthetic of the show so we just don't see Maz Mickelson and you know, tidy whities in the in the prison cell. Um, and and a big part of that is going to be the Mind Palace, of course, and also uh, probably you know utilizing a flashback structure so we can keep having that present and also to see how his culinary expertise has infected other characters on the show and as a result of their exposure to him. You said last year in the panel that the only problem NBC really had last year with anything graphic was the the angel wings, right. and you just had to correct it by having the blood run down the buttocks. Right. What was the what was the thing this year or this past season? The, the really the, the only thing that that the biggest thing was the buttocks on the uh, Windigo when he was humping on Caroline Devarna. Oh and really? So he was humping so vigorously <laughs> that the sheet sort of came off of his butt, and so they were like, "Well, a no humping. You can have people on top of each other, but you can't imply thrusting because then that is unequivocally penetration." And so we had to digitally put the sheet over his butt, and then we had to do a lens flare and shake the camera so you couldn't see that he was humping on her. But it just looked like it was the the you know a, a visual uh-huh. yeah. style thing. Yeah. So, Interesting. And the funny thing, if, have you talked to Caroline yet? Yes. So did she tell you about the face dropping off in the middle? Oh. Like, so this guy's humping on her. Yeah. And she didn't know until the day that there was going to be the guy in the, the stagman outfit that was that was going to also participate in the orgy. Uh, 
<laughs> and she had uh, because our director Vincenzo Natale who directed Splice and Cube and is a fantastic talent and is going to be coming back for season three uh, it was his idea it's like you're doing this intercut love scene that becomes this three way where she's kissing Maz and then she's kissing Hugh can I bring the stag man into that do you mind or is that too weird and I was like no 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 like, brain, like, like give us more weird and so Caroline didn't know and she was like what's he doing here and they're like oh <laughs> so in the middle of it like he's humping on her and so sweaty the suit's ridiculous and uh, his face is plopped out uh, on her because it's a, it's a mass face glued to his face and then we digitally go through and like slim him down and make him creepy but the raw dailies he's a guy in a big rubber black suit and looks ridiculous so she's there getting humped on and his face falls on her and so the, the dailies are hilarious so that's 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 our our, our uh, standards and practices story uh, nice. is that movie for real? that is on the deep real big thing. Has it been decided a theme for the episode titles for the next season? We had the Japanese titles and Italian. Italian. Yes. So, you know, and the, the fun for us is there's, you know, Italy plays a big part in the novel Hannibal. And we're going to be doing a lot of that book in unexpected ways in, in season two. So, or season three. And it's kind of taking, you know, his escape from Science of the Lamb and since we, we created an escape for him in season two moving up that whole story so it's not 20 years later that Mason Berger is waiting for his revenge he's like you guys just did this to my face and I have an agenda so we're going to be visiting you so Michael Pitts coming back uh, if his schedule permits we, we're, we, we have him in episodes and we know that he wants to come back but he's also very busy so it's a matter of like can we carve out the days to get it. In, in this season, uh, pretty much everybody's playing games yeah. except for Hannibal. Hannibal's season though, is the oldest person in the season. Season two or season three? Season three, two. Right. two. Um, there's a great moment in the part in season finale where Will says, Why did you leave? I'm asking first because like, did he want him to leave or was he trying to set him up? Okay. Yeah. Because it's very well, ambiguous it's also, whether he was playing who he was playing, Jack or And that will that ambiguity will continue into the to the season, but there's all sorts of reasons why he would make that call and ask him to leave. A to save Jack Crawford's life. Or B to save Hannah Electric's life. Or C all of the above. So and, and we get into that with his story, and that's very much part of his arc is him dealing with the impact of this guy. Now that, that we did a little bit of that in the second half of the, the second season, where they were able to talk to each other, but Will was being duplicitous. Will was pretending to be somebody that he wasn't in order to seduce Hannibal, or, you know, you know pretending that he was somebody a little different than who he was. And with, with this new season, it's, it's very much about their relationship independent of being in the room together. But they, they're very much, their story is very much about each other. <laughs> Thanks, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. This type don't even try to bite the side of style. Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.